shopping while I was in Spain. I originally was planning on doing some kind of like mega haul, like everything I bought in Spain, but I was making a list of everything I bought in Spain and I got very embarrassed. So I kind of whittled the list down to somewhere between like my favorites and everything. Also excuse the pile of clothes in the back if it's even visible, I can't really tell from here if it is. I have a bunch of clothes that I've been wanting to get rid of for like two years now at this point and I've finally gone through them and now instead of sitting in a suitcase, they're sitting on my floor. So. I guess that's supposed to be an improvement. <laughs> okay, I'm done talking. Let's get started with this. So this is one of the last things I bought actually while I was there. It was very cold for most of my time there. I was in Northern Spain. I started warming up in like May and I was like, if it's warm for two weeks, I'll buy a dress. And then I went to Mango like, uh, three days later and bought this dress. It's bright orange as you can tell. And what I really like about it is that even though it's orange, it's overwhelmingly orange, it's an orange dress. It has a lot of different colors in there. We have some green, some red, purple, blue, white, black, so I can really wear it with accessories of any color and it all still looks very put together even though it's literally just one article of clothing. That's number one. So next we have this green shirt I got at Mango also, actually. They were tired of me, I know. So it's this sage green color that everyone and their mother was obsessed with starting last summer. I was obsessed with this color. I bought a fair, I bought a lot of stuff actually in this color. As you might have noticed from my little nervous tick there, the sleeves are too short, which means I probably should have left it behind. Probably shouldn't have bought it, but I was wearing coats for most of the time because whenever we'd go out, again, we would stay outside most of the time and it'd be very cold, especially in those first couple months. So I usually had a coat on over this, so really all you could see was this cool little square neck detail, which made it pretty worth it. Uh, it looks really good with brown, with green, with denim. I have some black and white pants. I really like how this looks with it, with them. It's probably not fantastic for summer, given that it is tight and long sleeve, but it does allow a little air here, so like for cooler nights, it's a look. I don't like how my puff just looks like a like a flat top. <laughs> it is a puff. I yeah. Anyway, so next we have this other shirt, also from Mango. So far, this is just a Mango haul. It's also my favorite fruit, actually, so I think it's pretty fitting. So as you can see, it's a one-shouldered cutout neck having situation. I started seeing a lot of these in stores around March and April and that's definitely carried through into summer. I've seen a lot of various funky cutouts. I have seen a lot of various funky cutouts. There's actually one like one shoulder neckline cutout shape that I've seen a lot that I really like and I'm glad that it's in style now because I had some fabric I got last fall that I wanted to turn into a shirt that essentially looks like this. I didn't have time before I left so now that it's so popular hopefully I'm able to find like a tutorial or a pattern or something because I do not have the talent to just freehand and make that. At some point this year I got very in my head about clothes for some reason. I don't know, I felt kind of boring wearing plain tops, wearing basics, but then I didn't really want to wear something really attention getting. So a shirt like this that's just plain black, sleek, form-fitting, and then has a little interest in the cutout. I think that's a nice way to add some visual interest without um, destabilizing my already tenuous mental health. <laughs> And then obviously being black, I can pair it with bright colors, patterns. I actually like to wear it with just black pants and black boots. I wore it out one night. I ran into a guy on his bachelor party and he was dressed up as the Little Mermaid. Cause that's a really big thing over there. People go out on their bachelor parties and they dress up. We saw one guy in full flamenco outfit, so that was fun too. Um, yeah. Next up we have a shirt I like so much, I bought it in three different colors. I got this yellow cut first. It's yellow. <laughs> it's a nice, very cheery, bright yellow. I especially like it because I like wearing yellow, how many times can I say yellow in a span of 60 seconds? I like wearing this color whenever it's raining out and it rained a lot where I was, so this was a nice little pop to throw under a coat or whatever. And then I went back, grabbed the white because I look great in white, which I always say and then rarely wear white because I'm irrationally scared of spilling something on myself. And then this one I really shouldn't have gotten. I, it's very rare that I do this. I don't tend to buy things in the same color. Multi uh, I don't tend to buy multiple of one thing in the same color because I don't generally feel the need to do so, but this was only like, I think seven euro. And I really like the collar. I love this like 70s-esque collar trend I've been seeing a lot. There's some dresses with this collar that I've seen that I also am really interested in. Although I don't wear a lot of bodycon, so I'm not likely to ever get them. But <laughs> having just said I don't wear a lot of bodycon, I do like how fitted this shirt is. I like how cropped it is. The sleeves are really nice and snug on my shoulders. So I thought it was worth it to get it at least in white. This is gonna be fantastic for layering when it gets cold again. And I wanna just throw a white collared shirt under a sweater. And then this one, uh, it's not that anything's wrong with it, but I I always forget this, but weirdly specifically, I don't really tend to like blue and white stripes. 
I don't know why. Like I have some blue and white striped shorts that I just don't wear. And then as the last of the shirts, we, ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. As the last of the shirts, we have another <laughs> collared shirt that I also got at Zara. I think I mentioned enough last ones at Zara. I did. It is navy and white with this very cool pattern, the name of which I do not know. If anybody knows the name of this pattern or in any way how to describe it, please let me know. Also, I guess I could just go look at the Zara website and see if they describe it on there. <laughs> anyway, I got this shirt pretty shortly after getting the, I think the first of the last three that I showed. Oh my god, this sentence has gotten away from me. But I got this pretty shortly after realizing how much I like the collar and a nice fitted sleeve. I've been very into like, very preppy, kind of like country club-esque outfits lately. Like I said, I love these collars. I've been wearing my Reeboks with socks kind of scrunched down a lot because I have very skinny ankles and I found the only way to make them look good is to have some socks, making it look like they're actually a normal width circumference. The only issue with this shirt, as you can see, it's kind of, it is cropped, but it doesn't come up over the waistband of really any shorts or pants that I have. And then it's so short that if I tuck it in, I can't really blouse it out properly. It looks kind of awkward. I think the ideal length for this, first of all, I think either layering it under something, so just the collar pokes out, which I don't want to do though, because I really like this pattern. Or I could wear it with some pants, because with shorts, with shorts, I don't know, it all looks, it's, it's a little dumpy for me. It's not my favorite, but, oh, that's not on my nose. <laughs> Anyway, shirt. So for outerwear, I only have two things to show because I left my big coat that I got back in Spain. Since I'm going back next year, I left mostly like house stuff and kind of like linens behind, but also I left my two coats because I don't need them, it's July. <laughs> what I did bring back was this lighter layer. So I got this jacket from Zara. It's that same sage green color that I mentioned being really into with the first shirt. It is a corduroy jacket. It's green, has a collar. Pockets that are pretty uh, inconvenient and also, where, what? Very inconvenient, they're back here. For being green, it was surprisingly versatile because the only colors I really wear are green and blue at this point, and so this went pretty well with them, as well as obviously white, black. So this sweater is actually the last thing I bought in Spain, I believe. I got this at the Museo del Prado the Sunday before I flew home. No, the Sunday before I flew out, and then my flight was delayed so much, I missed my connecting flight from New York to Atlanta, so then the night ended up in, in New York. Anyway though, one thing about me is I love a museum gift shop, so I spent plenty of time in there winding through. And then on my way out, I'm doing this because they had really cordoned it off kind of strangely, I guess for COVID, so people would like stay in an or- I don't know. Anyway though, I saw this in the little sales section at the end, and the lady who went back and grabbed this one for me said it was an extra large, so I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I'd like the fit, but a stay in extra large is a US large. So it's this nice red, but kind of deeper maroon brick color. For a long time, red was my least favorite color because whenever I would think of it, I would just think of like fire engine red. But I do like this deeper kind of more somber shade of red. I like the white faces on it. They are different, I guess, studies of like facial expressions in French for some reason, even though I was not in France. And then on the back, there are some more complex versions of the expressions. And it says the name of the museum across the top. I'm actually not crazy about how this collar looks peeking out at the top, but whatever, I'll survive. So now moving into pants, we're starting with probably the least interesting pants in this video. They're also the ones I wore like 95% of the time. So these are culottes I got from Stradivarius, a store I had never heard of until I went to Spain in December. And the first time I went in, it did smell like a fart, but after that it did not smell like a fart anymore, so. They don't have pockets. They don't have front pockets, they do have back pockets. And there are a few pairs of pants I got that just didn't have front pockets. And I gotta say, I actually don't mind because I don't really tend to put things in my pockets when I'm wearing pants that are this fitted. So I don't really miss them not being there. And then fake pockets are rage inducing, so this is fine. Like I waxed poetic about in my last video, I love wide leg pants. I have very skinny ankles. So skinny jeans definitely reinforce just how skinny my legs um, are slash were. So I do like how wide leg pants kind of flare out at the bottom and balance me out at the bottom. I'm talking in circles at this point. You know what pants look like. Next up we have these corduroys which also don't have front pockets. So they're a nice, uh, I guess, beige or camel color. I don't really know all the names of all the news. But I got them because they're corduroys and I love corduroys. And there was a pair that I thrifted last fall that I didn't get a chance to take in before leaving. So I got these so I could have some cords there. But I didn't wear them as much as I expected because they're quite squishy around the ankle and they're not a great length. Like they're not long enough to kind of puddle around the feet. Plus I don't really like doing that when I'm out and about in like dirty city streets because then they all wet and nasty. So I'm not 100% sure what the move is for these pants. I'm not gonna get rid of them, obviously, because it's summer, so I wouldn't be wearing them that much anyway, because they do trap a fair amount of heat. So I'm just trying to work with them in the fall and see what I can do. 
So next up are these pants that I also got from Bershka, which is where I got the corduroys, which I forgot to say because I'm very bad at this YouTube thing. I remember I saw these in the store and I was just coming up on the end of my like shopping budget for the month. So I left these and didn't come back to get them for another like two weeks to a month. I don't know why because I still have not worn them out of the house even once. I just, I had wanted green pants for a while, but I didn't want to just jump in and buy the first green pants I saw. But then I just saw these in store and then just was like, I'll buy them in a couple weeks and then didn't really look around for any other green pants. I don't know. Similar to the last pants, they're swishier than I would like, but they are quite long, so they don't look bad with my white sneakers. Anyway. Green pants. Not my only pair of green pants. Here's another. So these are, I call them linens. I don't... It's probably not actual linen though. I don't think I own anything that's 100% linen. They're very comfortable, soft, kind of yoga pants, fitting X-esque pants. But the waistband's so tight that I never really reach for them to wear them around the house. So I have to kind of recalibrate my brain to wear them in public, especially now that it's hot enough to wear something this light out of the house. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much I like it with this shirt. I thought they'd be kind of at odds. This is probably the closest I come to wearing like loungewear in public, but I'm not mad about it at all. So this is the last pair of pants, and I actually didn't pay for these. My roommate, when she was packing up, just gave them to me because she couldn't put them in her suitcase and she didn't like them that much anyway. And her reasoning was that this is a pretty stiff waist, which she's not wrong about. It is pretty tight, but I think it just needs to be worn and washed a couple more times. We had a washing machine, but not a dryer, so a lot of our stuff didn't get that kind of soft, worn-in feeling that you get from washing and drying a bunch of times. But I think if I wear this enough in the summer and wash them, they'll become a little more worn-in and comfortable, I hope. But yeah, I own too many pairs of white jeans for somebody who will never wear white pants out of fear of sitting in something. I got two pairs Black Friday actually that I've barely worn and I got these for free but because these were free to me I'm hoping that I'll feel a little more comfortable wearing them. <laughs> it's not that a person needs to wear white or like force themselves to wear white but I got this weirdly intense vendetta against blue jeans while I was there. Especially once I started wearing the wide leg jeans you know they're high in the waist they're wide in the leg so it's a lot of fabric it's like two thirds to three quarters really of my outfit, the most like small this shirt is. And I feel like it's just a waste of real estate to just be wearing blue jeans. So that's why I have so many pairs of pants. And actually one more pair I didn't include because this is my last video, the tan jeans, which is the same cut. Um, was I going somewhere with all this? I don't know. White pants, great for summer, great for, for um, uh, <laughs> wearing. So for shoes, I got two pairs, um, the first of which was very necessary, the second of which was not. So the first pair is just this pair of rain boots that I got within a couple weeks of getting there. It's a very rainy region. Not a particularly snowy region, I was told very often, but it did snow three times in the first week I was there, so climate is changing. And I wanted something with a little bit of better tread than my Doc Martens so I wouldn't slip and shatter my kneecap on the sidewalk. These chunky platform boots were like the first main trend I saw everyone wearing. Like everybody and i mean i live in the suburbs now so obviously you can't really be out kind of walking around seeing people the way you are in a city so it's probably part of it but um yeah so i got these at zara i like how i kind of look like a cartoon character stomping around in these big ass round toe boots and then the other pair i got is this pair of platform kind of go-go-esque boots from asos they look a lot cuter in the picture and they look cute here but it's this thing that i talked about at some point where like I'm getting overly technical here, I think, but the point is that they're just not as high as I would like. They're not terrible. I've been very into platforms. Obviously, as you can tell from the only two shoes I got, both being platforms. So I'll probably sell these because they are cute. I just don't like how they look on me. And then that way this winter, if I want another pair of boots, I'll feel a little better about getting some. And then lastly, we're going to have what I call the etc. category that I'm putting at the end. I don't think anybody really cares. I got this silk scarf that I got at a little vineyard situation. It's pretty, it's green, it's got little leaf motifs, motifs on it. We all know how I feel about any kind of plant imagery. We also might not know how I feel about pink, but the answer is negatively. <laughs> it was definitely folded up in a nice neat little square when I bought it, so I didn't realize that the other side was pink. But I mostly just use this like to wrap my hair when I'm sleeping, or that's it really. I also got a couple of tote bags, which I'm realizing I don't really need to show because my whole plan was to not show things I showed in the last video, whatever. This one's got some illusions on it, and I got it at the Reina Sophia Museum. And this one says, don't worry, be Nedict. Benedict. Eggs Benedict. Right, because I got it at a cafe in Madrid. I also got a jade ruler at a huge open marketplace my last day there, along with a bunch of other crystals because I love crystals. Oh, and then also, I actually forgot about this, but I also got this little box that says Logroño. That's the name of my city. And then I also got a couple books because I'm an indie bitch and I want to have coffee table books for the non-existent coffee table. Well, to be fair, I did have a coffee table and 
two of these books were on the coffee table until we moved out. So honestly, I'm a sucker for anything involving like herbs or medicinal plants or anything like that. Flora kind of native to an area. I got one of these at a museum. It's full of fun art prints, so it's nice to just sit on the couch and flip through. And then two of these I got at a used bookstore in Madrid that had all kinds of really cool stuff. And I definitely should not have been buying more stuff so close to leaving, but I mean like books are the easiest thing. You can just put them down flat on top and press them in. So we have reached the end, finally. Um, I'm still holding this jade roller. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I assume you did if you're still watching at this point, which by the way, thank you. I appreciate that. If you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe. Like this video if you like this video. Oh my god, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go take a walk or something. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs>